Sherry. Welcome to my craft room. This is floss tube number 12. Uh, for those of you who are new, I'm Sherry. This is my craft room where we chat about cross stitch, a little sewing, a little gardening, whatever crafty things I get up to, but mostly cross stitch. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're a returning visitor, welcome back. I'm glad to see you. Uh, this time I have finish, I have starts, I have progress. I even have a fully finished object. Um, I have plans. Um, let's get to it. We'll start with life. Um, it's fall. It's finally fall. We have had beautiful weather. It's been in the 70s. We've had the windows open. Just loving it. Um, unfortunately, this time of year is when my allergies hit. I'm not allowed to just enjoy the cool weather. Uh, I have been sick. I've had a sinus infection, but it's going away. I, I am still a sneezy little snot ball, but the sinus infection is going away. I, I will warn you, I'm high on Benadryl. <laughs> but um, it just makes me a little bit loopy. So, um, we have put out the Halloween decorations. We even put up the Halloween tree. Now, it's just a small little tabletop tree. It's not very big. Um, the cats have loved it. Or the kittens, I should say. Heck if he doesn't care. Snickers and Jelly Bean, though. They've been all up on it. Um... Just as I said, I've been sweeping up shattered glass ornaments. And they're just the little glass balls. I think I might have five left <laughs> on the whole tree. I was talking to a friend on Instagram the other day. And I told her my Halloween tree is starting to look like the Charlie Brown version of a Halloween tree. <laughs> um, so... That just reinforces what I said before. I need to, to start making more ornaments that aren't breakable. <laughs> we managed to lose a Halloween candle holder. Um, Snickers swatted it off the shelf. <laughs> because cats. It's like they, the meme on social media says. Um... We know the earth isn't flat because the cats would have knocked everything off of it by now. <laughs> um, but anyway, here's my sad little Halloween tree. It would do Charlie Brown proud. Um, um, but anyway, we've the last couple weeks have been me and my daughter going to all of the doctor's appointments and getting all of our physical exams out of the way and everything else all the blood work all of that good stuff I'm still healthy which you know hey at my age that's great um other than that not much going on um I've tried to do some stitching and some sewing I haven't managed to sew anything but I did cut out a lot of things um, but I did get some stitching done. Not as much as I would have liked, but I did get some done. So, we'll start with that. Cross stitching. Okay, well, we'll start with a fully finished object. Um, I had said before that I was working on the Winnie the Pooh cross stitches. I did the Pooh and Piglet, I did the Eeyore, and I still had the Tigger left. Well, I started Tigger, I finished Tigger, and I fully finished the whole thing. So, 
I am so happy with how it turned out. Um, I know that's kind of far away. You can't get a good look at it, but I'll put a picture here. Um, now what I did was I just used the little felt squares that came with the, the cross stitch kit and use those for backing for contrast against the whiteboard. Uh, and then I mounted the stitching on there. And these little things were actually buttons that I had. I have no idea where or when I got them or why, but I had them. And I mean, I'll never use these for garments. So what I did was I cut the shank off the back of them and then glued them on here. And they work great. I mean, I have a Poo, I have Piglet, I have Eeyore, and I have Tigger. So they worked out great as decoration for this. It's got the picture hanger on the back. So this is a fully finished Christmas project with three cross stitches. And my daughter will absolutely go wild over it. And she will want it hanging on her wall. Now, that was a start, finish, and fully finish. I have another start. And this one is another Christmas present. I had shown you last time that I had finished this bookmark from my mother. Um, it turned out pretty, but I hated every, every minute of it. This was a nightmare of quarter stitches, half stitches, three quarter stitches, satin stitch, this, that, and the other. Uh, 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 it was awful. But I finished it, and I have started the next one. I have started this blue one. Um, now I'm just using what came in the kit. The, the 14 count Ada, the, fat, the floss, etc. I have begun that one. And as you can see, I've just done the outline and I've started filling in and I'm just color completing the green because I already had the green floss on my needle. Um, but I've begun that one and this one, I have looked at the pattern and it is just like a full coverage of full crosses. So I don't think this one will be the nightmare that the other one was. Um, and whenever I do a cross stitch project and I mean if you hear noises like dogs barking and people screaming it's because the windows open and we have a dog kennel I guess you could call it it's like a doggy daycare place across the street I would never allow my dog there I can tell you that that woman spends all day long screaming at him but anyway, so if that's what you're, if you're hearing that, I apologize. Um, but anyway, um, whenever I do a cross stitch project and whether it's from a magazine or, well, I mean from a magazine, but from a kit, I keep the pattern. Um, just in case I want to stitch it later. That's like with the, the Winnie the Pooh kits that I did for my daughter. I kept those patterns because you never know. I may want to stitch Pooh and Piglet again and put it on the front of a, a, a bag for her or whatever. So I keep the patterns. I never mark on them. If I'm going to mark on a pattern, like for a full coverage piece, I'll make a working copy of it and mark on that. That way I still have the original pattern. Um, so I keep all of those. Now, that being said, Will I ever stitch this again? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> but I'll, it's the patterns for both bookmarks are on the same sheet of paper. So I kept it. I got it. <laughs> it's fine. Um, if the second one turns out easy, I may stitch it for myself. You never know. But anyway. Um, I have begun that one and I don't think it'll take as long as the other one because like I said, it's just full coverage, full crosses. So that's easy enough. 
As long as you can count, you're good. That being said, a Benadryl, <coughs> counting is not an option. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so that's my other new start. Now, the progress. Uh, last time, you had seen, I had begun this one for my husband for Christmas. Um, I had, it had looked like that. Well, I had begun filling in the, the darker blue part. I had begun filling this in, but I had run out of this color. And after going all over town trying to find it again and having everyone being sold out of it, I had had to order it. So while I was waiting for that to come in, I had begun this green for the tree. But I got this floss, so I finished this color. And then this brown is the outline of the boat. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that way I can just fill this in. And then once this is filled in, I can fill in all around it with the two fish and all the, the little back stitch and black work stuff. So a little bit of progress, not a lot, but that's because this is one, it's a gift for my husband. I don't want him to see it so I can only stitch it when he's not home. Um, so, and he hasn't been traveling this month. So I've only been stitch, been able to stitch it in the afternoon before he comes home from work. Uh, now he did say he was going to have to be going to Dallas and to San Antonio next month. So I will probably be able to get a lot more done on it then. So hopefully it'll be done in time for Christmas. And the next one, uh, the only other one I've worked on is the Rare Horror Flies Stitch Along by Noctiflora. I love this project. I love it. Last time when you saw it, it looked like this. Um, I am keeping up with it. Uh, I am on target as far as time goes. Now, I haven't stitched the part she just released because she just released it the other day. And as I said, I was sick. Um, but I will probably stitch it tonight um, or start stitching it tonight so that I can get caught up again. I mean, I'm not behind by any means, but that way I can get it done. But this is what it looks like now. I absolutely love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is creative. It's different. And my husband really likes it. He really likes it. He's already said he wants to get it professionally framed once it's done. So that'll be cool. Um, now I am stitching this one on 14 count Ada. It is done by Witch's Garden Craft in the colorway Deadly Blooms. Uh, she designed this fabric specifically to go with this stitch along and she did an amazing job. I mean, it, it complements the color so well. Even my, my diesel mechanic husband has commented on how amazing the fabric just matches the, the colors and the design. So if he notices it, everybody will notice it. She obviously did well. Um, but like I said, I am caught up with it, but she has released the latest part and the latest part, it just fills in around some of the bigger pieces. So I don't think it'll take me long to stitch. If I can't finish it tonight, then I'll finish it tomorrow. Um, after I clean house because Friday is house cleaning and laundry day because I don't want to do it over the weekend. Now I just cleaned house the other day, so it shouldn't take me long to get the house clean tomorrow. And then between loads of laundry, I can stitch. Yay! You gotta plan this stuff. Um, but anyway, 
that's what I have worked on the past two weeks. Uh, like I said, not as much project progress. Words and syllables are hard. Um, not as much progress as I would have liked, but still quite a bit. So I'm okay with that considering the appointments and, you know, spending two days in bed sleeping off crud. Um, I did get a little bit of haul, not a lot. Um, now plans. I'll show the haul after the plans. Oh, and the gone fishing one. I am stitching on just plain solid white 14 count Ada. DMC floss. Nothing fancy. Um, plants. Watching the pillaging and ravaging and savaging of my Halloween tree the last few weeks has hammered home to me what I said before. I need to get on stitching more ornaments, both Halloween and Christmas, because I am pretty sure there are going to be Christmas casualties too once we put that tree up. Oh my God. I have no doubt in my mind I will walk into the living room at one point and see jelly beans sitting on the top of the tree and Snickers swinging through the branches like Tarzan. So <sighs> it's a thing. But I love them. I adore them. Um, right now they're asleep. All three of them are asleep in my room, in my bed. Well, on my bed. So, I'm enjoying the peace. <laughs> because the two little boys have been fighting all day. Because brothers, right? Um, anyway. So... I, I, I think I've got it figured out. What I'm going to do is each month, starting November, because I should be finished by the Rare Horror Flies by Halloween. Um, that should be done. Um, because I think, let's see, what does the schedule say? Um... The last release is October 20th. So, yeah, I'll be finished by Happy uh, I'll be finished by Halloween. Um so that'll be another finish, another project off my list. So, I think in November I'm going to begin and what I'm going to do is every single month I'm going to do one Christmas and one Halloween ornament. Um the ornaments don't take long. They're so small. Um, they only take a couple days to, uh, and that's to get them fully finished, okay? Um, so, if I do one each every single month, then by next year when I set the trees up again, I'll have a good, you know, 12, 13 ornaments. Um, so, that is my plan starting next month. Every single month I'm going to do two ornaments, one for Halloween, one for Christmas. And I've already started going through my uh, Just Cross Stitch Halloween and Christmas special editions to start picking out those ornaments. So that's cool. Um, my other plan is I, I'm working on the Treasure Island Stitch Along from Owl Forest. Now, I haven't gotten much done on it because I, I'm, I took a break from those projects to get the Christmas presents done. Um, so... I'm working on that one. I'm also working on the botanical black work. And then I have the uh, Satsuma Street four elements stitch along, which I don't, I don't really consider that a stitch along because it was released in four blocks and they're huge. Um, whereas the botanical black work, the rare horror flies, the treasure island are all small pieces that are easily done within a, you know, a couple days. So, I don't consider the four elements a stitch along. I'm just going to treat that like a normal pattern and just work on it. But the Treasure Island, the Botanical Black Work, both of those have small pieces that are being released. Now, I'm behind on both of those, but I started them late. They had already begun 
the, the stitch along when I found them. So I started them late and I've still been downloading all the pieces to them. So I have the patterns. I just haven't been stitching them, but they're small pieces. So I figure every single month, if I do at least one piece for each of those, then I'll get them done. Um, now, if I want to do more than one piece, great, I can. But every month I'll do at least one piece. Like the botanical black work, I may even do two pieces per month. Because they're just small little squares. And it's just backstitching. It doesn't take long. I, I can do it in one afternoon. So if I just spend two afternoons, I can do two pieces, right? Um, so that will get those done. Um, like I said, the Sasuma Street, four elements, I'm just going to treat like a full pattern, not a stitch along. Um, and then I have my stamped kit that I'm working on, which I can only work on that for about an hour at a time because that stiff canvas hurts my arthritic hands because yay, old age. Um, so that one's tough. It's, it's tough for me. I will finish it, but it's just going to take a hot minute. Um, and then I also have my Mill Hill kit, the Moonstruck. Um, and I'm probably a third of the way finished with that one. So that one shouldn't take me long to finish, honestly. And I figure if I do that, then my husband can pick some more projects from the cup. From our mystical, magical cup. Um, that has 108 projects in it. I want to stitch all of the things. Um, so those are my plans. Now, they're not set in stone, but the ornaments are set in stone. We're going to get this done. <laughs> because my poor little Charlie Brown tree, <laughs> he looking sad. <laughs> and naked. He looking naked. <laughs> um, now for haul. I only got a little bit of cross-stitch haul. Honestly. Um... Forbidden Fiber Co. I got my fabric of the month for October. And I love it. I always love their fabric. They do such a wonderful job. Um, and I get the Fat Quarter. And it's Ada Zweigart 14 count in the colorway Corinne. And it is lovely. It's in almost like an orangish color and there are just very faint shades of gray so it gives it an aged weathered look which is perfect for a lot of my patterns now normally um as soon as this comes in i'm i match it with a pattern just like i did last month um, I got the blue modeled one and I immediately matched it with my Egyptian cat pattern and it's in the, the pattern with it. Um, this one came when I was sick, so I have not yet matched it to a pattern, but I will. And, you know, I'll let you know next time what I've matched it with, but I don't just buy fabric for the sake of buying fabric. When I get a piece of fabric, I immediately match it to what I want to stitch on it. Um, and then of course, whatever scraps are used, I'll use for ornaments or whatever scraps are left, I'll use for ornaments. Um, so I haven't matched this to anything yet, but I will. And probably this weekend. Last week, I mentioned I was on Witch's Garden Crafts, snooping around. And I'd gotten this pattern. If you don't like the language, I'm sorry, but it's for a shop full of diesel mechanics. And trust me, this is mild compared to the language they normally use. Um, I wanted to do this for my husband for his shop to hang in his office because this saying, Jelly Bean wanted in. My little baby Jelly Bean. My little baby Bean. And he's purring. Oh, he's purring. 
He wants his dog. He loves his dog. And she's terrified of him. Um, but as I was saying, I had ordered this from Witch's Garden Crafts. I want to do it for my husband's office. Now, like I said, he's a D he's well, he's the foreman. But he just runs a shop full of diesel mechanics. So this language is nothing for them. But this is a saying they say all the time. Um, so I thought it was perfect for him. Now, when I ordered it, I had also ordered a fabric that I was thinking I would stitch this on. Then I got the fabric. <laughs> and the fabric is too pretty for this. <laughs> because of course it is. Um, and I've said before, I absolutely love Witch's Garden Crafts. Her fabric is gorgeous. She does an amazing job. Um, and I'm going to take this out of the plastic, so sorry for the crinkles. Um, it's 14 Count Ada, and it's in the colorway Tortuga. Now, I know you probably won't be able to see it, but it's sparkly. It's, it's the sparkly fabric. Uh, maybe see it a little bit that way. Um... But it's gorgeous and originally when i ordered it i was thinking i would use this fabric and use a dark navy blue floss to stitch the the pattern instead of the purple but now that i've gotten the fabric it's too good for them <laughs> it's too pretty <laughs> they don't get it i'm sorry it's mine <laughs> i know that's awful isn't it and she always sends you a little key charm which I love. I love it. And I save them. I'll probably use them on cross stitch projects. Um, but anyway, as I said, I got this fabric and now I, sorry, guys don't get it. Um, I will, I'll come up with something else for them. <laughs> so now I need to match this fabric with a project. Um, and you can find Witch's Garden Crafts on Etsy. And as I said, she has such beautiful fabric. She also does stitch-alongs, and she also collaborates with designers who do stitch-alongs, just like she did with the Noctiflora, with the Rare Horror Flies. And I, I love her stuff. I do. Um, and another thing, when she... She sends your order she usually sends you I mean she sends you a little thank you card but then she sends you a sample of a different color now when I got the fabric for the rare horror flies she sent me this bright sparkly pumpkin orange which I've already got earmarked for a Halloween ornament because it's just a little square but it, that's big enough for a Halloween ornament or a Christmas ornament or whatever and this time as you can see it's a dusky purple there we go. That's a good representative. It's a dusky purple, which again, I think will be perfect for a Halloween ornament. So I'm going to earmark that for that. I can still hear him purring. Oh, he gets to snuggle with his dog. As I said, he absolutely loves Artemis. He loves her. He adores her. He rubs on her. He hugs her. He gives her little licks. He wants to snuggle with her. He loves his dog. But anyway, so the guys don't get this. <laughs> I can make do with something else. <laughs> so I'll be matching that to a project. <laughs> and the last bit of haul I got. Um, I watch... One of the floss tubes I really enjoy is crisscross stitch. And he is a floss tuber. Well, he's from Alabama, but he lives in New England. And he tells the most wonderful stories about growing up in Alabama. And he's, he's wonderful. He does beautiful stitching. Um, but he had mentioned on one of his floss tubes that he had gotten... He's gotten into doing ornaments, a lot of the Mill Hill and Satsuma Street ornament kits. And what he's been backing them with is self-adhesive felt sheets. So 
I went on Amazon and I got me some. Because if I'm going to be doing ornaments every month, I'm going to need ways to back them. Now, you know, obviously some of the ornaments will be put in hoops or whatever. I'm not going to finish them all the same way. But, like, I have one Mill Hill ornament kit. And I may get some more. And I may look into getting some of the Sesuma Street ones. Um, so I got some of the self-adhesive felt sheets. And they're, it's just a variety of colors. All different colors. And it's got the peel away backing so it's just like a sticker you just stick it on the back cut it to to your the shape you want and you're good so i got some of those in the interest of doing my ornaments and i'm going to try these out he swears by them and i've seen ornaments he's been backing with them and he does an amazing job and this is a great way to do it because it's just a nice solid color that, you know, matches your ornament that you've stitched and it just finishes it off nicely. Um, so I got a package of that and there's quite a few sheets in here. Like I said, assorted color. So there's Halloween, Christmas. If I want to do some Easter, I got that too because there's yellow and pink. So we good. Um, so that's the cross stitch this time. I have plans. I'm not just making it up as I go along. Um, now, on to garden. Now that the fall weather is here, we've begun clearing out garden beds from the summer garden. Our, our peppers are still going strong. Now, I have harvested hundreds of chili peppers. Um... The ones I don't use fresh, I go ahead and dry and then grind up for spice. Um, and we grew ahi mango peppers this year. They have a sweet, fruity taste, but then the heat kicks in. And it's a, it's a mild heat. It's not even as hot as a jalapeno. It's mild, but it's enough to be good. Um, we've harvested tons of those and I've been drying them and and grinding them up for spice they they're great for that um now we cleared out a four by eight bed uh four feet by eight feet and we've got it planted with bush beans the the yellow wax beans uh because we all like those uh we've cleared out another bed that's four foot by four foot and we planted broccoli cauliflower and cabbage in that now there's just three of us and then my son comes in grocery shops from the garden from time to time so we don't need a lot um so we just that and the only person who eats cauliflower in our family is my husband if i pickle it i will do a bread and butter pickle on it and he eats it. Nobody else touches it. So we don't need a lot of that. We planted like one row of cauliflower and then two rows of uh, cabbage and then three rows of broccoli. That's it. Um, we cleared out another four by four foot by four foot bed and we planted it with chard, spinach, and Chinese cabbage, the Napa cabbage, um, because we all eat those, a ton of them. And then we've planted the tomato seedlings <laughs> in that six pack cell, cell that my husband planted them, the seeds in. We have 18 tomato plants, <laughs> 18 or 19. So I've separated them all out and we have planted them in the bed and they've all been, they've, they've all taken off and they're doing fine. But yeah, I had to separate all of those. Um, so that's where we are with the garden. We've begun clearing out another four foot by eight foot bed. Um, that's got teepees in it. We had beans growing on them, but now we're going to finish clearing that out. Uh, we had to stop midway because it started to rain, but we're going to finish clearing that out and we're going to plant the tea peas with snow peas um, because we eat a lot of snow peas. So 
we're working on the garden again, a little bit at a time now. You know, I, I haven't been able to do a whole lot being sick, but but before I got sick, we managed to get quite a bit done. Um, so that's what's going on in the garden. On to sewing. Sewing. I haven't gotten any sewing done. Now, I have cut out the pieces to make my daughter's doll. Uh, I just haven't started sewing it because, like I said, I've been sick. And trying to hand paint a doll face when you're sneezing your brains out doesn't work. Um, now that I've gotten better, or I am getting better, okay, <laughs> I can start sewing it. And that's probably going to be the next thing I start stitching. Uh, I've cut out several things that I have stacked up waiting to be stitched. Um, there's a flannel shirt for my daughter. There are two pairs of flannel pa uh, pajama pants for my husband. There's a t-shirt for me. Uh, there's a pair of pajamas for my daughter. I have, I found a pattern for polos so that I can make some golfing shirts for my husband. And I've got some gray fabric for that stacked up there. Um, I have the fabric picked out. I haven't cut it yet, but I have the fabric picked out for my my project keeper. It's going to be sunflowers with some gingham in green, more sunflowers, and then this. This I'm going to use for probably the binding. I don't know yet, but I have those picked out. So... I just have to get it cut and stitched up. And then I have the, the foam and the vinyl over there. Um, I got all of that cut out. Like I said, I haven't stitched anything because I've been sick. But I have it ready and waiting. So now that I'm starting to feel better, probably next week I'll begin stitching her doll. Which will probably take three or four days. And then after that I can start stitching up the other stuff, which clothes don't take long. Now, last week I did not show you any of my daughter's dolls. Um, I, I had forgotten because old age. It's a thing. So this week I remembered them. And we have the little Daisy doll. This is, she's got her little apron and her little daisy print dress, hand-drawn face. She's got her petals with a little pink rickrack and a little bow. Um, she's all yellow, but she has a little pink daisy doll. So, that's one of her Christmas dolls that she's gotten over the years. And I've actually done a whole line of these. I've done... People love them. And so, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, ask me to make them, and they, they've paid me for it. I've done sunflowers. I've done daisies. I've done um, a poinsettia. I've done... I've done roses. Um, so these, these are popular. Um, but we've got that one. Um, so that's the doll this week. And I threw something on the floor because I'm awesome. I've gotten the i'm sorry my nose i'm trying not to sneeze all over everything um i don't know where it went oh it's in the other room i had showed you the pattern i have for making a little house for the cats out of fabric i've gotten the stuff to do that i haven't cut it yet but i've gotten the stuff i think that's going to be their christmas present this year um, they'll have their own little house that mommy made. 
especially Snickers. He loves caves. He loves to, he loves caves. Um, he's the one that you're most likely to see under the covers. He also, the way he starts at night when we go to bed, he's in the little cave in the cat tower. He starts out asleep there and then about 3 or 4 a.m. He comes and finds daddy so he can get his lovin's. He needs his lovin's. And then he'll come to mama and get some more lovin's. And then he'll wiggle his way under the covers and sleep with us. Now Jelly Bean sleeps between our pillows. So he gets lovin's all night because he cuddles with mama. He, he is my cat. I'm the only one who doesn't get bit. As soon as my husband comes home, Jelly Bean runs up and bites him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he loves Daddy. He does. He gets excited when Daddy comes home, but he runs up and bites him. <laughs> and what's bad is he'll bite him and he'll do the little head wiggle thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. My Jelly Bean is very special. He's a special kitty. But anyway. He is my cat. Snickers is my husband's cat. And Hecate is my cat. Because we originally had Hecate and Apollo, which Apollo is our little orange tabby who, who passed right before his third birthday from a heart defect. They were brother and sister. And Apollo was daddy's. Hecate was mine. Well, then when Apollo passed, after about a month, my husband, he's like, I, I miss my little boy. I want I want a little boy. So we originally went to the shelter to look at Snickers. We didn't know about Jelly Bean. But Snickers and Jelly Bean brothers were in the same little cage. And my husband couldn't decide between them. And for some reason, he thought I was going to control him. I don't know why, since I would bring home all of the strays. He ended up with both cats because he's like well which one should we get and i just looked at him and said yes <laughs> like i'm gonna say no to either one of those adorable little faces i don't think so <laughs> so we ended up with both of them which is fine but jelly bean immediately attached himself to mama and snickers immediately attached himself to daddy you know that's how it is every cat we've had has been that way they have immediately attached themselves to one person. Now, you know, they love everybody else in the house, but that is their human. So I have, I have Jelly Bean and Hecate, and my husband has Snickers. Uh, I am the only person who can pick up Hecate without her screaming. Now, my son, when he comes to visit, he's all up on her. He picks her up, carries her around, and the whole time she's just screaming bloody murder. <laughs> But my husband doesn't even try to pick her up anymore. Because as soon as he touches her, she screams. Now, she'll let him pet her, but not pick her up. Which, to be fair, she doesn't like to be carried around. She is very much an independent cat. Now, she, do, she does like her lovin's and she does like her snuggles on her terms when she wants it. But anyway, so... I've got the, the, the fabric and the stabilizer and everything to make the little house for the cats. I just have to, to sit down and do it, which I don't think that's going to be hard because it's just big squares. It's four walls with a door cut out, a window cut out, and then the roof. It's not hard. So, um, I don't know what I did with that pattern. It must be in the other room where I was matching fabric. I don't know. But in any case... So I've got that sorted out. Um, other than that, that's what's going on here. As I said, I, I haven't gotten as much done as I wanted because I was sick. <laughs> I didn't feel good. But I'm better now. And I will probably sit down and stitch the latest section of the Rare Horror Flies after I finish video stuff um that way there's only one piece left after this um so it's almost done but in any case that's all that's going on here 
um, thank you for visiting me in my craft room with my sleeping babies over here. And I hope you like what you've seen. I hope I didn't ramble too much in my drugged out Benadryl haze. I refrain from sneezing. That's good. Um, but in any case, if you like what you've seen, like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell notification thingy, all that YouTube stuff. And, um, I hope to see you again. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope whatever you choose to do is amazing. And I hope to see you next time.